In this video, I'm going to look at four different Z790 motherboards from Gigabyte uh, that are made for Intel's brand new 14th generation of CPUs. Now, 14th gen is just a refresh of the 13th generation of processors. So uh, if you already own a 1700 socket motherboard, you don't really need to get a new one. And to be honest, you probably shouldn't be buying a new CPU anyways. But new motherboards do get some nice new features and uh, improvements that might be very interesting to some of you. And then especially so if you're upgrading from something that is a bit older. So uh, let's see what uh, Gigabyte came out with uh, in this generation and how these motherboards compare to the ASUS models that I covered in a previous video. Let's begin. I have four different models right here, so I'm going to start with the most basic one, uh, which is the Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7, and then I'm going to work my way down the stack to the most expensive one, because just like every other brand, uh, Gigabyte just adds on features with every step up in price they make. The Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7 comes with four M.2 slots, and all of them are covered with a heatsink. And while ASUS was the first brand to add little M.2 latches to save you from having to bother with those tiny SSD screws, Gigabyte here went a step further and made all the heat sinks toolless as well. It is such a simple little thing, but it makes a big difference when you need to add or replace an SSD. You get one Gen 5 expansion slot that is reinforced and it comes with a larger latch for easier GPU removal. And you get two more Gen 4 expansion slots that are connected to the chipset. It comes with six fan headers, which is a bit lower than on some other boards. Uh, you get three addressable RGB headers, two internal USB 2.0 headers, an internal USB 3.0 header, and a 10 gigabit USB-C header for the front panel of your case. The IO shield is integrated, and there you get 10 USB ports, including a 20 gigabit one, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and Wi-Fi 7. The audio solution is also fine with an ALC1220 chip and an optical out as well. Now this board does miss some of the proper enthusiast features like a hex display and physical buttons and the M.2 slots are all Gen 4 so you cannot really benefit from Gen 5 SSDs. On the VRM side, Gigabyte upgraded to 1690 amp power stages for the vCore with large heat sinks on top of them. So this is going to be more than enough if you want to go for an i9-14900K and then even with a bit of an overclock on it. Though, if you want to do some extreme overclocking, I would still wait for some proper VRM testing, but Realistically, uh, very few people will actually need more than this, and this motherboard should be enough for pretty much any gaming rig you have in mind. Price-wise, this should cost less than the ASUS Tough Gaming Z790 Pro, and for the most part, they are pretty comparable, but there are also some differences that I want to mention. So this Elite X uh, gets you one more M.2 slot, it has heat sinks on all SSDs, uh, the SSD mounting is completely tool-free, it gets you 6 instead of 4 SATA ports, and Wi-Fi 7 instead of 6E. And you get 10 USB ports instead of 8 on the rear I.O. The Tough, on the other hand, has one more fan header and it has 20 gigabit internal Type-C connector uh, if your case supports that, but that is pretty much it. So I really do think that Gigabyte is doing a better job at offering more features in this lower tier of motherboards. Next in line is the Z790 Aorus Pro X, and with this model we're finally seeing a proper silver-white motherboard. So it's not just white covers on a black PCB, it has a matching PCB as well. Now this will go great with lighter builds, as well as Gigabyte's own Aero graphics card, uh, which is what I used in my Cooler Master Cube 500 build, for example. The Pro X pretty much builds on the Elite X in terms of features, and the only exception is the number of SATA ports, which goes from 6 to 4 on this board. But the rest is either the same or better. You get 5 M.2 NVMe slots, with all of them being uh, tool-less and heat-synced, and this time around, the top slot does support Gen 5 SSDs if you want to go that way. There are 8 fan headers and the internal Type-C header is upgraded to 20 gigabit. You also get an internal USB Type-C connector with DisplayPort support, which is meant to make it easier to connect those extra displays that are used in some cases, like the Height Y60, for example. 
you still get 10 USB ports on the rear I.O., including a 20 gigabit one, but you get more faster ones than on the Elite X, and the Ethernet is now 5 gigabit instead of 2.5. The power delivery gets a little upgrade as well, going up to 18 and 90 amp power stages for the V core, which is again more than enough but you're still missing the hex display and physical buttons. This board nicely competes with the Asus Strix Z790A. Uh, they should cost the same, uh, they both have white heat sinks, but Asus doesn't have a white PCB. Uh, they're very similar in terms of features like SSD support, uh, fan headers, other internal headers, and even the rear I.O. Now, Asus offers a slightly better audio chip and two more USB 2 ports on the back, while Gigabyte offers slightly better VRMs and 5 gigabit Ethernet, but the rest is basically the same. So, it will either come down to brand preference or just visuals, and I do think that if you're going for a white build, having that matching PCB helps the Pro X stand out just a bit more, in my opinion. Now, next up is the Z790 Aorus Master X, and this is Gigabyte's proper high-end board without going too extreme. It is a large extended ATX board, so do keep that in mind with your case choice, and it has pretty much everything that you would expect. It does come with a hex display, physical buttons, ridiculously overkill VRMs with 20 105 amp power stages supported by a heat pipe and a proper finned heatsink. It has a backplate on the back for anyone handling their board on a daily basis. It has a proper GPU removal button and voltage measuring point. So this is a proper hobby motherboard. You get five M.2 slots, including a Gen 5 option. Uh, they're all heat synced. It has three addressable RGB headers and two USB 2.0 headers. But here you get 10 fan headers and two internal USB 3.0 headers for cases that come with four USB 3 ports on the front. The rear I.O. is also very impressive, uh, 14 USB ports total, including two 20 gigabit ones and seven 10 gigabit ones, and here we get a proper 10 gigabit Ethernet as well. Now, it is a bit harder to compare this motherboard directly to the competition. The Strix Z790E is a bit cheaper, but it really doesn't compare in terms of VRMs, uh, rear I.O. and so on. The Dark Hero feels a bit closer to this board, but uh, even though it adds a Thunderbolt, a second internal Type-C, and some headers for custom loops, it also costs a lot more. Now, Dark Hero has fewer USB ports and it doesn't have 10 gigabit LAN, so seeing a motherboard as complete as the Master X that costs a lot less than the Dark Hero does make it look way more attractive, in my opinion which isn't something that I can say for the Z790 Aorus Extreme X. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic, but before you get too excited, it is important to remember that this motherboard costs 1300 euros, which is about $1,000 without taxes in the US. And spending a small fortune on a Z790 motherboard, uh, which will probably not support the next generation of CPUs, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But this was also never meant to be sensible, and the main reason this board exists is that Gigabyte can show off what they can do without having to worry about cost or having to worry about reason for that matter. And uh, most of that effort has gone into making it look much cleaner than your average motherboard. Most connectors are completely hidden to the side and accessible through adapter cables, so there are no visible cables at the bottom at all and the top cables have a cover over them. Plus, they added a really large display to make it stand out even more. In terms of features, it does add a few things on top of the master, so a power delivery goes even more extreme with 24 power stages for the V-Core alone. There's a second USB Type-C connector for the front panel, and the rear I.O. now includes a dual Ethernet, including a 10 gigabit one, as well as two Thunderbolt ports. And to be honest, uh, those features might justify another $100-ish premium over the Master X, but they definitely don't justify doubling its price. So this clearly is just a showcase board, but uh, even if you had way too much money to spend, you probably shouldn't spend it on an over $1,000 Z790 motherboard. Nevertheless, 
every brand needs to have a flagship model to show off what they can do. And uh, we will probably see some of the more interesting features that are experimental now uh, make their way to the mainstream boards in the future. Because personally, I would definitely like to see other uh, more reasonable models with a focus on hiding cables completely. Anyway, like I said in my previous motherboard video, uh, most of these boards do look great in terms of what they can offer, but they're also very, very expensive. So street pricing might end up looking a bit better eventually, but for now, uh, Gigabyte only has one new board that is under 400 euros or dollars, and that is a lot of money. I really do wish we got some new motherboards that are just fine instead of being more or less an overkill for most users. So if you want a cheaper motherboard today, you will have to look at cheaper chipsets like DB660 or DB760, for example. But if you want a Z790 board Anyway, the Elite X should be more than enough for most users. It has become so feature complete that unless you really need some specific thing for your specific use case, you really don't need to spend more than what this one costs. It might be the lowest option of these four right here, but it really is a solid board with decent VRMs and plenty of connections for most of you out there. I also think the Aorus Pro X is making a very good case for itself as well. It does cost a bit more, but it gets you that unique PCB color scheme, plus it adds some features that some of you might find compelling, like another M.2 slots, faster USB ports, 5 gigabit Ethernet, 20 gigabit USB for your front panel, or that internal Type-C DisplayPort header. Again, most of you don't really need to spend another 90 euros just for those features if you're not going to use them, but at least it doesn't feel like they're trying to overcharge you just for a different color scheme. On the high-end side, I would say that the Master X is very expensive, uh, but so are the high-end motherboards from other brands as well. And as I said before, I really do feel like Gigabyte did a good job at adding a lot of features to make sure that you basically get everything you might ever want, while making ASUS seem a bit cheap for not having 10 gigabit options in this generation. And this isn't a board that most of you will really need, uh, but if you decide that you want all the bells and whistles, it does get you a whole lot. So while being expensive, I would say Gigabyte is doing very well when it comes to actually offering you a good amount of features for your money. And I think I made my opinion on the Aorus Extreme X pretty clear, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Now that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their Virtuoso Pro gaming headset. With its open back design and 50mm graphene drivers, it offers an excellent sound quality in games, movies, as well as music. It is very light and extremely comfortable, and you can easily adjust it to very small as well as very large heads. You can also easily replace the cables, uh, ear pads, headband, and covers, making repairs and maintenance easier than ever. Check them out using the links in the description below. That's it for today. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about these motherboards. And if you like this sort of content, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.